he would always tell me I wasn't gonna make it in this, and I was just like, mm. I was like, all right, well, that's 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 good. That's the motivation I need, you know, from the time I started it. I want to start climbing the ladder and beat everybody he beat faster than he did. So I was like, well, this is the first guy I want to fight. Then I was like, and I was like, and since I know you like to build your fighters pad records, I was like, yes. Yeah, tell you what, won't you? If you're not nervous, won't you give me one of them guys who want to pad their records? I promise you, the full rules. I just told him I fight for free. I said, I'll fight for free. I'll get one of you guys. I said, you find me there, I'll fight for free. Dorian Price, um, from Baltimore, Maryland, in the U.S. Um, that's where I was born, but been a nomad for a long time. Different, um, you know, really can't say. Wasn't all bad, wasn't all good, you know, but growing up in Baltimore, it's, 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 it's interesting for sure. It definitely builds character. Um, when I was younger, I remember my father telling me, you know, you survive, grow up in Baltimore, you, you can make it anywhere. You take the same lessons that you learn in Baltimore, climb to everywhere else, you can be successful in anything. Just had it tough, you know, everybody was just, just tough. I mean, my, I had uh, my older cousin, he was a Marine from Vietnam era, and, you know, just tough, tough guy, just actually wanted to go to Vietnam just so he could get some medals. So, you know, I just come from like a tough family, just, yeah, tough, tough upbringing. I remember just, uh, yeah, just different, different things that most people would think would be like kind of and you know, abnormal was kind of normal for us. I remember just out at the park and all of a sudden shootout breaks out, everybody shooting and, and shit going crazy and everybody running. My little brother's out there, he running, everybody scrambling just to shoot out, coming home and uh, talking about telling uh, my pop like, Man, got to sh you know, just I was playing ball, they got to shoot out, da 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 da. And I'm just sitting back there cool as can be talking about, mm, well, you survived, so it's a good learning lesson. In the story, I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> I don't know, I pretty much was gonna be a fighter from day one, I think I was just bred to do this. Uh, it was just a matter of me just finding it later, but I think it was like, just the hand that was dealt for me, it just, I didn't realize it until I got a little later in the card game that that was the hand I was going to play. I remember switching schools um, in the sixth grade. I went to, uh, actually seventh grade, I went to a new school. I remember my father sitting me down before I went, first day. And, you know, I'm thinking he's going to give me some sort of like talk and uh, pet talk about school and stuff like that. And I remember him just looking with a straight face saying like, all right, look, this high school work. This is a new school, you're a new kid, so you won't have to fight somebody. So this house is gonna go down. You know, you gonna fight the dude. Don't 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 get no fight with no punk. Pre preferably find the biggest dude and the baddest dude in school because you're gonna need to earn a reputation or you're gonna have a rough time at this school. It's gonna be a rough year. And he was like, so don't worry, you're probably gonna get suspended. You're gonna get, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be out of school for a couple days. And he was like, but here's the alternative. His house is gonna work. You have options. Either you will spend that suspension time uh, doing chores and working, <laughs> or you gonna have you gonna spend it like having a nice day. And you working if you run out there get your ass whooped. But if you win, <laughs> your suspension gonna be alright. So then it was funny he just went in and actually tried to show me some moves. It was bullshit, but nonetheless. So I remember going to school and uh, end up getting into it with this dude, like the usual tell the dude, you know. Meet me at three o'clock. <laughs> we got to three o'clock. Everybody, you know, made the scene at the lunchtime. You know, I, I kind of started with bumped into him. I kind of scoped out to figure out like who is the like, you know, who I who, who seen to had the most respect and whatnot. And uh, so yeah, it was three o'clock. We went out there and uh, yeah, we got the scrap. And mm, mm, mm. boy, that ain't, ain't good for me. I must have picked. The motherfucking Golden Glove Boxer or something. Cause I remember he just whooped my ass 
like a motherfucker. But I caught some, I, I, I caught him with some good shots. But I think it was after that day I was like, hmm, I might be all right at this. Cause I could take, cause I realized I could take a hell of an ass with him. But it wasn't until late in life that I started fighting around. 18 is when I first got into it, seriously. But that was the, I guess, the unofficial start. My little ass whooping. And my first uh, fight, I mean, I started back before anybody knew what any of this really was. I mean, and especially when I was just saying in, in the States, uh, it was 97. Uh, for the kid named Sean Seagrave from uh, Phil Nurses. A guy named Phil Nurse, uh, who, who since become famous for training, like likes of GSP and John Jones. Um, I remember the first thing thinking to myself was like, going to my instructor was like this, just thinking to myself like, oh shit, man, like damn, this ain't like no street fight, man. This dude actually like been training to whoop my ass, man. It ain't like it's in, like, fuck, man. Like, I remember thinking like, shit. I mean, then I can go out there running, punch him in his head and shoot me ain't looking or get the one up on him. They're like, shit, man, he gonna know when it's time to go. I'm gonna know when it's time to go. And fuck, he been training to whoop my ass. Like, I'm gonna train to whoop his ass. And and, uh, and that was it, remember? So I remember just being nervous as hell going in there the first time. And then, you know, first time he hit me, just remember thinking like, oh shit, this ain't too bad, man. This is just, this all right. I remember ended up winning uh, by decision. Uh, and it was a good fight up until the end. I you know the last round I ended up catching him with uh three good knees, just just jumping jump knees and stuff and and, and, and uh caught him one right in the throat. But uh it was a awesome fight and that was probably the one that let me know like shit man, I, I can I can really like be something at this, you know, like like it was it was my it was my calling because I was still in a situation where, you know, I was kind of a knucklehead. You know, I'm not the type of person to say what I got, like, you know, role models or heroes or things like that. But I'll tell you, someone I respect is like Bernard Hopkins and uh, another person that I respect. Uh, it's probably one of my better better friends. One of my best friends is his name Kevin Ross. Um, just them, because, like, for, for what they, you know, what they accomplished and, and what they, the struggles that they had to overcome to get where they are. A lot of times people just see the end result. They don't see the shit, you know, that, you know, you have to go through. There was a time where I remember being, you know, in Vegas with Kevin, we would live in a gym, literally, and roaches and shit everywhere and stuff, getting up training and stuff like that. So those, I guess those are the people that I look up to. I mean, any, and I guess you could put anybody in the category that's, that's come from fucking, uh, a situation where you know the odds are against them. I mean, shit, and and they and they make something of it. Um, experience was it was it was interesting for me. I mean, at first I really didn't want to. I mean, it was kind of like, well, um, I had a buddy of mine uh, that was kind of like acting as my manager at the same time, was you know telling me about the show and saying like I should try out for it, and I was just like for shits and giggles, like yeah, yeah all right, whatever, you know. Uh, I just dabbled in MMA just because where I was at the time there wasn't a whole lot of opportunities for Muay Thai and stuff and so you know MMA was starting to come around and uh, got on to the show and it was uh, it was a good experience I mean it was I, I enjoyed the camaraderie I enjoyed the fact of just being able to be somewhere for six weeks and not have to worry about like nothing just almost like the outside world doesn't doesn't exist. I mean, almost like you locked away and confined in a situation where you just training with, you know, uh, other people who just hungry, you know. And so it's like it was just no no distractions for me. It was a perfect situation, you know. Um, aside from the cameras, I just couldn't get used to that. That was the biggest thing. I remember coming off the show and. Uh, you know, I like couldn't find nobody, wasn't finding anybody to help and stuff like that. And uh, my own, for my own team, it was almost like they kind of turned their back on me and shit, you know. But like, that's, for me, it was like, ah, whatever. When the first time I like, somebody had turned their back on me, so I was kind of used to it. Like, like, no one really kind of schooled me on what the fuck, you know, like, at that point, how much 15 minutes of fame is, everybody wants to piece you and shit, and you know, everybody like, fucking, you know, you got fucking, 
girls that wouldn't spit on you all of a sudden, you know, somehow managing to find your number and people seeing you on TV, associating TV with having money. I remember having uh, people, I'm not gonna mention any names, calling me up, talking about, yeah, we seen you on TV, you know. Then when it hit you up for the money thing, like, it automatically some magical way, like being on TV gave me like more money. Nah, I broke his ever and shit, caught on the other end. And this is out of the blue. And I remember him sitting there saying like, you know, yeah, it wasn't like, hey, how you doing? It was just, it was, heard you got your ass whooped. Embarrassed yourself. And I remember thinking to myself like, all right, well, you know, here we go, it's gonna be like a, a pep talk or something else, something else, things like this. And I just remember after that, the next phrase was like, mm, you ready to quit now? You ready to give up? You know, told you you wasn't gonna make it. You know, you you know, you should you, you should have you should have listened, should have stopped a long time ago. And you know, that was like the nail in the coffin for for, for really hardening my arm and really like you know getting myself together. That that whole experience was because I just remember it's like fuck it, it's it's me in this game and me alone. I can't depend on nobody. I can't trust nobody. I can't you know uh, take anybody word for nothing. I mean. I had whatever I get, I had to get on my on my own, and that was cool because I just went back and resorted back to life lessons I had learned growing up. My best friend was doing, you know, since I was 16, he'd been doing like life in in prison. One day, you know, he was talking to me about, you know, uh, about opportunities and things like that, and this was from someone, you know, he was. Uh, Phenomenal football player at the time before you know, you know certain choices took him a certain path But you know I was just talking about and he was just asking me what was I doing and so on and so forth And I was like I'm not really doing Shit, you know, you know, you hit knowing about the fight and stuff I'm like, you know I'm like, I don't know man this game. He's like, you know, you need to go somewhere where you're gonna have no distraction So that my brother we chip chip, you know put it together and got a one-way ticket I remember my brother telling me, you know, like it was a one-way ticket and then you know He's like, you know, you get your ass a one-way ticket that way you don't have no option. You can't fail. He's like, and the only way your ass can come home is fighting her on your way back. He's like, cause he's like, cause if you, he's like, don't get it to uh, a round trip ticket cause that's an out. Cause you have an out. If shit don't go right, you always have a return date. So I ended up in Thailand and those things and that's why, you know, and, and, and being here, I guess, a lot of people, I don't know if they misunderstand me or, you know, don't know too much what they, I don't know what they think. I mean, it's great people here surrounded by beautiful people and uh um but sometimes i think i'm maybe just misunderstood because i mean everybody has a reason for being here everybody's sacrifice I, I you know i guess everybody have a story you know my story ain't no better or worse or glamorous or not than anybody else's if i'm not training i'm pretty much in my room i mean i like i enjoy the confinement because i mean i feel like for me fighting one thing i guess that made fighting good for me is that, you know, that I love it so much is you can't rely on anybody, you can't blame anybody. If you start getting your ass whooped, your homeboys can't help you. If 50 Cent was your entrance music, 50 Cent ain't gonna jump out the speakers if you start getting your ass whooped. I mean, it's you and it's all, you know, and, 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 and you know, and that's and that's that's what I love about it. And that's why I like to, you know, constantly be getting comfortable with my, by myself, you know, almost to the point of like, Sometimes it does drive me insane because I, 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 I want to put the most amount of pressure on myself that I possibly can. To almost to the point where it just drives me to insanity because I'm not playing checkers. I mean, I'm fighting. So, you know, insanity is just part of it. Ten years from now, you know, God willing, I'm still, I'm still around, you know, and, and, and still have the ability to be in the sport. like to be a... Uh, you know, have been a champion, like, more importantly, like, be in a position where people can look back and be like, you know, and, and, and look at me and say, you know, shit, man, you know, he he never gave up. Whatever happens in my situation, you know, like, like I said, I like to be a champion, like to go out there, and, but more mostly I just want people to look back and be like, you know, fuck, you know, like, he, he, he made it, you know, through perseverance.